I'd like to talk to you about your early thoughts on, on riding Konegri. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you, you, you formed that relationship with him and, yeah. and, and wh- what did you think of, uh, of the horse? You know, you said you, when you, you sit on, on Sprinter, you sit on mm. Altio, you just sit on a horse. Similar with Coney Gris? Uh No, because Coney Gris had gone through that uh, hurdling season where he was putting in some incredible performances. Yeah. Um, Matty Bachelor rode him. Um, and thank God Matty didn't hold it against me that I got the ride on him, but... Um, yeah, that was, you know, the owners um, were very good to me and put their faith in me. But um, he was just a complete athlete. His legs were just so extraordinary. You know, his back legs were so long yeah. and everything. It was, he's made up quite in a bit of an odd way in that his back legs are so long. Um, but again, he was just an athlete and the Brassocks ju- uh, teach their horses to jump and be so slick um, that he was, he was more like an old horse, even as a novice. Without trying to find every cliche under the sun. But often as a, as a viewer watching Coney Gris r- racing, it looked like he wasn't going very fast, but everything else was off the bridle. And mm. also he got over his fences so quickly and yeah. away from them so quickly. Mm. Well, again, we, w- we actually had him, we were gonna run him at Plumpton and we got down to the start and they pulled him out because they said he was lame. Mm. And I couldn't understand it really. Missed out on the bonus. Yeah, missed out on the bonus. God, yeah. that passed me by. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we went to Newbury the next week, weekend, for the grade two, and I just I thought I was just having a hat canter around, and he just put them to the sword. Um, actually, no, he didn't. That's a lie, because the horse came quite close to me. I think yeah. Del Arca. Yes. Like um, but it wasn't until the Corto Star where he really showed what he could do. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a look at that Corto mm. Star. And again, you can remind us of, of what that felt like because it was just, it looked to be a demolition job from, from a long way out. Well, this is where I probably showed my inexperience. I mean, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm really... What should you have done different? Well, just giving him a nice easy time. You're, how many how many lengths clear are you there? Oh, you, know, you don't need to be doing all that, but... Um, you know, it's it's grade one. And why so am I, why am I, doing, away. why am I doing that? Because you are crazy. you getting carried away because yeah, it's of course grade I am. one. I, you know, I don't, and I also, you, I didn't know how far clear I was, but you know, that's hindsight, isn't it? And I was still, I was still only three pound clean. And obviously, after this race, you know, everyone was saying, oh, you know, he's a certainty for the RSA. Yeah. But the Bradstocks were, they already had the Gold Cup in mind at this point, didn't they? Mm. Uh, well, after that, I think. Um, the way he did it there it was just seriously impressive. Wasn't did it? you believe he could win the Gold Cup in that season? But again, you, you forget how inexperienced I was. You know, what, what do I know? Because <laughs> 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 that's the other thing as well. People, I remember people asking you, saying, well, you know, what would you do? What would your advice be? Yeah. I, mean, I might have even said that to you, and you mm. said, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, I, and, and I thought, oh, God, he's been a bit rude there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but genuinely. But you, genuinely, how, how can you, as yeah. a, you know? It'd be like, I know, who's a, who's a three pound claimer around at the nose saying, oh, you should go for the derby. Yeah. It's, you a, know, it's, it's like Ma- Martin, well, you know. Martin Dwyer taking uh, John Stones to one side and giving him advice. Well, I'd say everybody needs a bit of advice now and again. Well, you know what you're right. talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I clearly did. Um, so, because <laughs> obviously he wins that, he wins the Denman chase. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I picked up a band two weeks before. Yeah. Um, um, and the Demon Chase is a, is a grade two, because if it was a grade one, you can move it. Move the band, yeah. Um, so I picked, I won a grade two at Doncaster, and I fell foul of the wit rules. So that was a bit annoying, sitting at home on the sofa. Yeah. Um, but Dickie, you know, yeah. watching him on him, was it was great to watch. There was never any danger, though, that you were going to lose the right? Well, you, you, that's what's going through your head, isn't it? You know, you've got the, okay. cha- the um, champion jockey, whatever. You said it was great to watch you. You didn't mean that, did you? Well, I had to go for a nice long walk after to get over it. <laughs> the worst feeling in the world, um, somebody else ride your yeah, horse. Yeah, but at least, at least you know you're on a winning horse. Yeah. Mm. Um, so were you guaranteed to ride back? But anyway, no, as soon as the race had been run on the phone, Sarah, that was brilliant. <laughs> um, and she said, yeah, right, we're on for the Gold Cup now. And I was like, oh, fantastic. And anyway, the, look, the Bradstocks and the owners were incredibly good to me to let me back on because how many how many trainers or owners would 
were put stuck with yeah, yeah. A a conditional back and on. they told you that day didn't yeah, they? yeah yeah after yeah, that yeah, race yeah, yeah. absolutely so no. you rang them as soon as the race was over yeah no question i yeah. lost six weeks of politics <laughs> for <you. laughs> Brilliant history and politics but that yeah. just shows you know what good people they are yeah, yeah you only great. need six weeks anybody mm. at home now you shouldn't really be mm. uh, advocating people to leave after yeah. six weeks of, but uh, you can keep going uh, with uh, six weeks of politics lesson. I think um, I need six years. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you're, you're getting a good spell on on the Friday Club, so you should enjoy <laughs> it. Uh, so okay, so you win. You he wins the he wins the Denon Chase. You win that race uh, on the Corto Star, and they're saying, okay, we're going for the Gold mm. Cup. Uh, that must have got you. Uh, you said you did when you won the the Corto Star. You're still inexperienced. You didn't you know? It's, it's all new mm. to you. All all still fresh. Uh, for Nico de Boinville. So yeah. what, what were the thoughts going to the Gold Cup on a horse so well fancied? That's great, isn't it? It's every you know, young boy's dream, isn't it, to be in that position and to be you know, with, a, with a live chance. Yeah, and, and, and what, was the, what was the routine in the lead up to it? Did you go, did you go down there, ride him out regularly, school him regularly? Yeah, so because so, the Brassocks are only five minutes up the road, you know, I could do my first lot at uh, Seven Barriers and yeah. then head on over. Um, and the most unique thing they did was they built uh, a fence going downhill because if you think everything he had gone on was a flat track yeah. so Newbury, Kempton, Newbury. Yeah. Um, so they wanted him to jump a fence going downhill. So they they built one on a on a nice steep bit of hill. Yeah. Um, and the first time I went down to it, straight through the wing. <laughs> really. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh god. <laughs> Pull, put the jerks down a bit, and then. Second time he worked it all out and whoosh, he was over. Yeah. Third time he was brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, I never knew that. Never knew mm. they'd, they'd constructed that. Yeah. Uh, and so then he's then he's heading to, to the Gold Cup. Mm. Uh, what was that build up like in the week, in the sort of the, as you got closer to it? Uh, so the Wednesday of Cheltenham, I put a crack in my collarbone. That's right. Um, and that was fairly sore now. Um, and then I went to Toaster on the Thursday just to see if I could ride. And you keep it all as quiet as you can because you don't want to be, you know, stood down. Yeah. Um, but painkiller up and away you go. Because in all seriousness, Martin, you, you, uh, you hurt yourself before Sir Percy in the derby, didn't you? Yeah, same thing. I, I, I didn't get x-rayed. I think I might have had a crack in my rib. I know uh, you kind of know, don't you? Oh, you yeah. Strapped it up yeah. full of painkillers and kick on. You know, you can't miss opportunities like no, that. No, of course you can't. Because you change your life, yeah, change yeah. your career. So you get through it, don't you, somehow? Yeah, exactly. But at what point does the, 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 do you think about the balance of help or hindrance? Well, that's it. That's, that's the question you have to ask yourself. You know, if I thought that I was going to be a hindrance to the horse, I would have held my hands up and said, I yeah. can't do this. That's why it happened on the Wednesday and I had to go and ride on the Thursday yeah. just to see if I was. Uh, and did, did the Bradstocks know you were? Oh no, you have to keep that thing very quiet. <laughs> you, you kept it quiet from Marcus yeah. as well, didn't you? you? Can't no, no, then... Marcus knew I had oh. a fall. He booked Richard Hughes in, in oh, case I didn't right. make it. Yeah, yeah. but you, you don't really want to let on, do you, you? You can't be going out to these big races with anyone doubting you. You know, they've put all their faith in you, and then for that to happen, oh. Yeah. But it's fine. Adrenaline gets you through it. It's amazing what adrenaline is. Uh, well, and so the, the Thursday toaster was was a breeze, was it? No, it wasn't a breeze. No. <laughs> How many rides did you? I had two rides at Toaster, um, and then on the Friday I had a ride in the Albert Bartlett, and then went to the Gold Cup. So yeah. it was all fine. Though. They strapped you down, and away you. Uh, so on the morning of the on the morning of the Gold Cup, when you woke up, what did you feel? Did you, did you feel the pain? Yeah, well, well, it's funny, isn't it? When you're when you're in pain like that, it takes your mind completely off anything else. Uh. Um, anyway, I rode out and then went to went racing and it's almost you know a bit of adversity can help the help the situation focus the mind yeah it can yeah so people were saying at that point okay he's a novice so he can't win the gold cup yeah the, his racing style is going to set it up for something else mm. you know something like jack adam is going to come and, yeah. and pick him up but in your mind were you always clear of what you were going to do when the tapes went up yeah. just away jump you go. out the gate go get him into a rhythm that's how we like to be like to race and uh, and he's such a settled, relaxed horse because you know, the, the Bradstocks train their horses almost singularly. And so yeah. they're galloping up and down the hills by themselves and they're very used to being out in open country by themselves. So not having horses around him didn't phase him at all and yeah. away he went. 
Uh, you know, we said about the person who emailed in Scott saying about uh, you riding horses from the front, getting them into a good rhythm. Mm. Uh, we often talk about jockeys, you know, getting the, the sectionals right, yeah. timing, knowing exactly what's left, uh, mm. what sort of speed you're going. Ha- has that? Have you always been fairly cognizant of, of that sort of uh, timings? How, what sort of pace you want to be going with with a horse? Definitely. Um... And I think particularly in the Gold Cup, it's when you go down the hill for the first time, you want to see how much horse you've got there. You know, when, if they turn down the hill and they suddenly lock on, mm. you think, ah, oh, here we go. If, if this is happening, you know, in the circuit's time, yeah. you're in with a right shout. Yeah. Um, but, you know, because if you, if you come off the bridle halfway down the back, it's yeah. lights out, really. Well, we are going to, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this, relive uh, the Gold Cup of 2015 with commentary. Uh, and here are the final stages. Towards the fourth last, on his own and road to riches have always been there. Sylvian Arco Conti and Jack Adam travelling strongly. Many clouds then holy well and they remain away from the others as they make the journey down. It's Coney Green pulled up Bobsworth at the back of the field. On his own road to riches, Jack Adam moves through into fourth. Holy well, Sylvian Arco Conti's under pressure on the inside in sixth place. Then many clouds. Smad place trying to creep into it and Carlingford Lock trying to pick up the pieces as well. Three out in the Gold Cup. Coney Degree, road to riches, Jack Adam the youngster on the inside, then Holywell on his own, Sylvian Arco Conti can't go on, Carlingford Lock trying to stay on, then many clouds and Cody Gree gallops on remorselessly, leads by two, road to riches with two to jump, Jack Adam and Holywell, Nicola Boyneville and Cody Gree lead by two, towards the second last, road to riches driven along, Jack Adam in third, then Holywell in fourth place, behind these on his own, Cody Gree jumping standing the test at the moment road to riches trying to launch a challenge jack adam on the inside cody agree carried towards the last by the roars of the crowd comes in one final leap over from road to riches and jack adam and now the hill for the novice cody agree the jumping's behind him wandering to the right on his own jack adam on the far side cody agree off a straight line still in front jack adam on the far side and cody agree inexperienced no object a novice the first for 40 years won the gold cup cody agree beat jack adam Third place for Road to Riches, Holywell on his own, many clouds, and behind the smart place. It is just one of the most wonderful things to watch back. And I, I only watched it. Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps and, uh, and a bit emotional watching it. Yeah. What are you feeling? Well, just that, just that, you know, that's, that's a moment that, you know, potentially changed my life. You know? when, uh, did you, when did you know you were going to win the race? Well, I could hear them coming. I could hear Road to Brilliant. Riches and, and Ruby, and I, I knew Ruby was going to have a good bit of Jacker down because he, he travelled away that horse. And it's a brave thing to do, and a novice to commit like that and really take the bull by the horns. Well, I knew he was hard fit and would keep jumping. So it was a, is it an advantage? No, because I think jump jockeys have a lot more to do with the horses than flat, yeah. right? just the way how busy our seasons are as mm. well, I think. But you spend a lot of time in the yard with your horses, and knowing this fella inside out, that would have made a difference. I'd say so, and, and knowing how, how the, the train is, you ride for train. Um, but, you know, he, he was just an out-and-out galloper and stayer, and that's what he did. And, and his cruisings, you know, you, if it turned into a speed race, you're going to be done for tow. So you have got to turn it into a slog. He just looked up to the skies, uh, gave a little kiss and yeah. shook Alice's hand. What, what are you feeling at that moment? Um, quite emotional which is, yeah, strange for me. <laughs> <laughs> no sign of the collarbone there, was there? Well, huh? well, you did see I nearly dropped all my reins because I just couldn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it? But it, it's just, just watching that, uh, the thing that makes me most emotional is when you see a horse that you know so well and he's so brave. Mm. He was so brave, Koenig, mm. isn't he? Yeah. He just, he, every time you ask him, I mean, look at his, his head carriage. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, goes, he goes to the fence. He wants yeah. to jump the fence. I love it, yeah. And you just go back through all the all the good horses in behind him that day, and what what a grueling but phenomenal race that was. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's many clouds, smad place. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah. Bob's were. Bob's were. Yeah, you know, you had some great champions in that race. And he's just he's and they're strung out. I mean, yes, okay, yeah. Gold Cups they do get strung mm. out, but it was hard, hard. But battle. All, all conditions suited as well. It really rained on the Thursday night. 
and that just opened it all up for us. Did you hear the crowd when you turned on up the hill at the last bit? Did you hear the crowd? Uh, you can hear it then, and it is so loud. And Cheltenham is, it's, you, you would, it's like something else. Like you can't, you can't describe it to people until they see it. And that's a, always a lovely moment at Cheltenham after any big race when your opponent comes up and gives you a, a little pat on the back. Ruby, first to congratulate you. Yeah, well, we all know how hard it is. Um, and, you know, we, we appreciate the horses and, you know, and the riders and all involved. We know how difficult it is to get to that point. Mm. Um, but, and that's, that's the, the best of horse racing, isn't it? And what was it like when the, you got back amongst the rest of the riders in the weighing room? What was that like? Well, then you get told that the Gold Cup winning jockey has to buy the champagne for the end of the night. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, God, I haven't got the money for that yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Yeah. But in fairness, I mean, that's not... That's but not no, it was, it was a fantastic time. And um, I think I had to ride in the... I don't know if I had to ride in the boys' race after, actually. I did. Yes. I rode in the yeah. boys' race, the race after. Yeah. How did that feel walking around at the start for that race? As a Gold Cup winning jockey. Um, <laughs> I, my mind wasn't quite on that race, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. it's a um, lot to take in. He had, obviously he, he retired the other day after his, his yes. run at Ascot. Yeah, um, I was I was standing nearby when the decision. Obviously, you were you were mm. speaking away to people, uh, and then he was paraded in front of everyone. I mean, it, yeah. is, it is amazing and, and emotional, wonderful mm. when a, a hero like that receives that reception uh, mm. as he did at Ascot. Yeah, I, I think these horses go through so much, and they have that uh, that amount of longevity to their careers that the public are able to, you know, warm to them. Mm. Um, and I was just glad that day that I was the one riding him and I could say, I think he's given us his all, you know, and um, I think he, he deserves his retirement.